hi this is Sarah the Stitchin Mommy and I'm here with a stitch with me type video hopefully this goes well I don't know exactly how much time I'll have I'm planning to stitch on this one with you but I thought I would also share some examples of my typewriter method because I have had lots of questions on that and I'm stitching several of my full coverage full coverages that way now because I really like it so I thought I would share what that is to me and um, what that looks like because I have had a, you know a lot of questions and obviously if you see parts of this method you like feel free to take it and run with it change it the, to fit you and it doesn't have to be exactly the way I do it so this is the first one one of the ones that I have done this way where I started it using this method Basically what I do with a typewriter, if you're not familiar, is you type your letters, you know, left to right, and then it kind of comes down to the next row and then left to right and down left to right. Just like in a Word document or something when you're typing. So I'm doing that with my stitching with how I choose my next symbol. Not necessarily stitching only on the top row, I'm choosing my next symbol based on the typewriter method. So the very first symbol I would have done in this pat pattern was the very first little dot, um, the little first little square. Then I would do that symbol wherever it occurred naturally in a naturally flowing pattern. When I was done with my string, I'd go back up to the next symbol that wasn't yet stitched and figure that one out. I have made a couple um, exceptions to the rule off and on because it is just for fun so there's no reason to stick to it if you're not having fun so with this one this is I believe 25 count two over one half stitches and this is I think the far side so I started here and did that symbol everywhere it occurred until my thread ran out and then I went back up into the next and you can see there's a couple different colors in there. I did cheat when I got here because I really wanted to do this flower. So I started in on these flower colors even when I was technically up here in the first row and bumped down into the second row to work on the flower just because I wanted to. But after I got that out of my system I kept going and you'll see some of these symbols that are here ended up over here as well just because I wanted to finish my thread. And then I kept going all the way to the end. And when I finished, got to the end, I said, well, what's my next symbol? And I, then I kept coming along here. So now in this case, my next symbol I will choose will be this one. Where, so that's the next one that is a hole that is not yet stitched. And when, when I could pick that, this project back up, I'll choose this symbol and then wherever that occurs. So as you can see, I'm not sticking with just the top row. I like to try to get to the top row um, as much as possible, but I, I will take the colors as they flow down into the design. So hopefully that makes some sense. <clears throat> Another one that I've done this way recently Is hibiscus fairy probably the next one in here G -H. It's this one so uh, I have an art design so the last one was by artisy and this one is a similar one Oops, I still got some thread on my needle this is 28 count um, one over one full crosses, but same same idea. It's not fitting in the screen. It's, it's wider than the other one. <laughs> so this one, as you can see, like I, I started there and probably did this little chunk. And I think I was tempted to keep going with this chunk because this chunk is kind of down here, but I just finished my thread and then was faithful to the process in choosing the next symbol which might have been that darker red right there which kind of ran this way so and then I kept I'd like if I had a symbol I'd kind of 
bring it down wherever it, it went, and then I'd keep going. So I have little bits farther down all along. I don't think I'm quite to the end. I think the end is still still to come. Like maybe maybe here. Surprise. So I'm not quite done with the top row of that one. But I do have more down. Like this color, I kept going, you know, in farther down. Those fuzzes really like me. Um into these other rows just because that's where the color occurred. So, but yet over here, I still only have the top row done. So it's definitely not a, I'm not sticking with only stitching the top row. That's again, the method I'm using to choose my symbols. Simply because sometimes I get in a little bit of a decision, indecision when it comes to picking symbols and I'll waste time trying to decide what to work on next. Where should I go? Which color should I pick? Should I do this one? It doesn't have very many symbols. Should I bother? <laughs> should I pick this other one? I don't know. And so it'll just be a waste of time and a waste of stitching time. So I want to get back to stitching. So once I discovered this, I kind of, I decided I really liked it because it took, took that indecision away to just Get back to the business of stitching. Where is this one? Huh. Oh, maybe she's elegant. I always forget. I think she's like young, um, young woman, but I think she's elegant woman. So she's up here. Yeah, elegant lady with a bouquet. I always forget the name of this pattern. This is mini elegant lady with a bouquet. This is another one I started last year, I think. This is 25 count one over one, uh, full crosses. So again, I have not yet made it to the other side of the design, but I am stitching below the top row. Cause that was some people had that question for me is, do, do you stitch all the way across like a typewriter where you would just only do the first line, then come down, only do the second line. I'm not stitching that way. This is just a method for how to choose the next symbol and then I'll stitch it where it occurs. So you can see here the outline of her bow um, on the top of her hat there. Here's the, the center of her hat right there. So that's fun. So now we shall stitch. And I will show you a tiny bit of the pattern as we go because that will probably help you see um, to help make sense, we will be working on the Knitting Woman, which if you've watched my regular videos, you'll see this pretty much every week these days. Um, right now I'm over here, I'm finishing up a string in the cat, but then I will pick, I might actually speed this up to just finish, finish this color. And then when I start talking again, I will explain how I'm gonna go about choosing my next symbol and where I'm gonna stitch it. So I'm gonna put that away because I have pattern keeper here. <clears throat> it's off to the side right now, so I will show you what's important when, when it's necessary. So I'm going to finish my string and then I will come back.
All right, I think that's as far as I can go with this string. So I will tie this off. Make sure everything's marked. And I thought of one thing while I was, is this one done? No, that's not done yet, okay. Um, I thought of one thing while I was stitching that I forgot to share, so I will pause here and go get one more example of this to share with you, and then we'll get into picking our next symbol. Okay, there was one more example that how you can modify this to fit a different pattern or if you use a Q-snap and you want to stay within a certain section, you can still use a similar typewriter method for pieces like that. I started this piece, Cat Alphabet, recently and I wanted to, rather than pick symbols all the way across the top before coming back to this one, I thought I would stay within the first block. So I'd go to the end of this block as best as I could determine in my pattern and then come back to the beginning and kind of fill in this whole block using the typewriter method. Then I would come over here and fill in this block. So that could be a method that you would choose to either do that over a page or over a section in your hoop or Q-snap. So it's, that's something that you can do to modify this to work for whatever your particular design is So or stitching style. So this is how that one looks right now. Where I started here with the first symbol and kind of wherever those first few symbols took me, kind of trying to edge this way as much as I could just so that I could try to make it to the end of this before the end of my stitching session um, on that whatever rotation I was doing. So some of these colors ended up outlining the letters cat, which was really fun. And then I got all the way to the end um, of this section. And as you can see here at the top, there's still nothing here in the second row. So I believe when I worked on this last, I had gotten excited just to get to the end of this section and then called it good. So next time I bring this out, I will come back and that symbol right there will be my next symbol that I will choose to um, continue working on this one. I won't keep going because I've reached the end of the section that I'm going to be using the typewriter method on, if that makes any sense. So that's that one. And that I thought I wanted to make sure to mention that since not everybody stitches in hand or on a large scroll frame where you can see the whole width of your design all at the same time. So that is something that you can do to modify it to work for different situations. Okay, so back to Knitting Woman. I was working in here because my last chosen symbol was up here somewhere and I have been filling in this dark color uh, for a while, three days I think, because I pulled the super long <laughs> blended thread. So here is Pattern Keeper. You won't be able to do it, make this pattern based on this, but I do need to show you this to show you how to do this method. So my next symbol I'm gonna choose will need to be the furthest most top. Sometimes you might be able to figure that out eyeballing it. I I can't always be sure, so it could be some of these, maybe that one, you know, so we'll go up here to the highest point where I haven't stitched, because see this is higher, high, high in this section, but I've noticed, oh, over here there's one even higher, because the default is top to bottom, then if there's a tie, it's left to right. So right now I'm looking for the highest. So right now I have some symbols here that are, you know, four up from this line, from this grid line. So anything else higher than that? Nope, doesn't look like it. So this right here is gonna be my next symbol. So I will work on that one. And there's some here in the dress. So that is a blend, so I'll show you I'll get my blend on my needle for you. And so because and this this pattern is a nice one to demonstrate this on because it is farther into the design. So it's you know uh 
when you first start a pattern, you have your, your section, you know, all the way, all along the top. And it's very clear cut. And I think things can get confusing if you are only looking at that. Because sometimes it does maybe appear like I'm only working across the top. But this is really just a method of choosing symbols. One, two, three. Measuring my thread because this one didn't have any lengths already cut on it. I've showed this in other videos before. I tend to like, in my master set of DMC, which is here, <laughs> I like to <clears throat> cut things about the same length all the time. And then if I'm doing blends, it's easier to combine them with other colors and then it's just always kind of uniform. So I've come to like that. I'll just make my blend out of one of these smaller pieces in the, the one color I had and call it good. And then that'll be uh, an excuse to be done and pick the next color a little bit sooner. Sometimes it's nice to just finish a color, but it's also sometimes awkward to find just the right combination of leftover threads, so. On my bobbins. And this is the extra piece of this one. So uh, once I get started stitching on this one, it looks like that one will then be my next one because I don't see anything else that's higher. And sometimes you'll find if you have similar, um, like this color maybe also is over here and is one of the next colors to do in another section, you could somehow arrange your stitching path to also include those so that you don't have to do that. Um, stitch again or do that symbol again with a new th thread you know you could do it with your current string and then you can move forward with the next symbol sooner <laughs> if that makes any sense i feel like i'm making not making any sense so i'm sorry <laughs> feel free to ask questions if any of this doesn't make sense Hopefully, what I shared was on screen, I'm just realizing. Okay, good. I wanted to make, I paused this to go make sure that when I was sharing in Pattern Keeper, that my Pattern Keeper screen was actually visible. Because <laughs> I was afraid, oh no, I explained all of that and you couldn't even see it, but it looks like it was. So now I can just stitch a little bit for you here. Um, yeah, again, I am not afraid of um, make sure I'm counting right. I'm not afraid of stitching off into the abyss here <laughs> on my pieces. I know not everybody can do that. So another thing you can consider with this method is how far you're willing to go um, before choosing your next symbol. So for me, I prefer to use up my string and I will go to great lengths and great amounts of counting to use up my string. 
that's not your jam, that's totally fine. You could say, I'm gonna work this symbol until the end of the page or until I have to count more than, you know, a block away, then I'm gonna stop because I don't wanna risk counting too far, you know, and that's totally fine. Um, you can make those adjustments to this on your own, depending on you and your stitching style and your comfort level and you know all of that. So this is just kind of demonstrating my thought process and I found it's a fun method for me because then I'm, I'm getting, seeing some things 100% complete. Like this section now is really fun to see it completely whole and more things are starting to come alive as I put stitches down the bottom of it. So it's kind of a, a fun, happy medium uh, stitching style for me and it takes the decision making angst out of picking the next color. So, so far this is working for me. Um, so if you can take any nuggets of, you know, away from the stitching session, I, that would be great. If you watch this and you say, that is not for me, that's fine too. <laughs> Everybody's different, and we all work differently. And but it's it is fun to see how other people do things, and then you can kind of evaluate whether or not that's something you want to try. If you think it might work for you, or I have seen other people, you know, adopt this method and use it in their stitching. And sometimes it's exactly like I do it. Sometimes it's a little bit different. So take it and then play with it if you find that it's close to just right for you, but not quite. And hopefully I'm coming up with some suggestions for uh, things that would make it better for you, depending on how you stitch. I do know I'm a little bit of a unique stitcher as far as stitching in hand and feeling free to stitch all over the piece. That's definitely not the norm. So don't feel like you're not a good stitcher if you don't stitch like that. That's, I, I feel like I'm, I'm abnormal in that respect. So I'm the weird one, <laughs> but I'm okay with that. I developed this um, in hand method that it just makes me happy and I like how my how the uh, fabric is smooth all the time because I'm not wrinkling it and I like that it's portable and convenient and I like I don't know did I do that one yet nope not yet um, yeah so there's there's I don't like how my stitches look when I do the sewing method, so I haven't done that. So again, if a lot of people say stitching in hand doesn't work for them because they need the tension, that's fine. I find the, ten the, the contraptions are more cumbersome than, than helpful and it makes the whole process not enjoyable <laughs> anymore. <laughs> so again, just find, find whatever works for you, find the method method that works for you. And I do find sometimes certain projects, I do certain methods, and it's fun to kind of experiment with different, especially full coverage. It seems like you can play around with a bunch of different styles of stitching. If you want is some examples all in a short span of time of different full coverage stitching methods, you can look at um, Vani's Flossmas videos um, she's over at Thread the Needle here on FlossTube, and um, over the Christmas, like beginning of December, she was doing daily videos, and she was picking little like stitching challenges for herself that would use different methods of stitching. And I think she might be doing something like that in March, but it could just be, you know, certain projects, not necessarily certain styles of stitching. I, I don't know. I couldn't, can't remember, but she demonstrated a few different methods of stitching full coverages that um, she did for the day and then showed you the progress and things like that. So that 
could be a fun way if you're look, looking for some inspiration of methods that might work for you that you ha might not have tried before or considered before. You don't have to try them all, but like checkerboard, not sure I want to try checkerboard where you work one 10 by 10 square and then work the diagonal 10 by 10 square after that and leave leave holes in the middle. It, that one's a little weird to me. <laughs> I don't know that I would want to do that one. Um, but I have tried working in rows. I've tried working in columns. I've tried working by pages. I've tried working with parking, with cross country, um, lots of different things. So it's fun to play around and honestly evaluate other people's methods and see, would I like that if I tried it? I don't know. Well, let's give it a go. So. All right. Every once in a while I pause to mark off my progress in Pattern Keeper. So here I'm getting to the end of the stitch it, the symbols of this color in this section. So this is where I will then decide because I'm choosing from the top down, I want to maybe try to, to I'll probably need to tie off my thread here. So then I want to go to like the next highest occurrence of this symbol so I don't have to like um, to try to use up the symbols that are highest up as, as like my, they're my top priority, I guess. The topmost sections of these where these symbols occur. So I'll look around. I'll show this again. I'm going to look around. I finished this section. And I could drop down here and go down here to do more, but I want to look over here and there is one up here. And there's more down there. So since this is kind of a far stretch, I might go over here and do this one first and then drop down and work on this one just because I want to get that one done. And I don't want to have to come back for it and be like, oh, just one stitch. So when this is already on my needle, oh no, it came off my needle. There we go. All right, so this is up here. Especially since this is a blend, it's nice to just do them when you, when it's on your needle. And I still have 35 stitches of this color. I don't know if this thread will be able to do all of them. It'd be cool. It's always nice to see that little zero show up in Pattern Keeper. But starting and stopping threads tends to waste some thread, so I may not get to all 35, and that's okay. So then going to the next highest chunk, it was that first one right under her hand. So let's go down to that one. It's right here. Some more of her dress showing up here, which is kind of cool. It's not there. Really enjoying seeing this come together and seeing the sections become complete and seeing more sections down here that are like oh there's more here there's <laughs> like when these ones went in I was like oh that's like the center probably of her 
whatever she's knitting or maybe like buttons on her dress. I don't really know. Sometimes I don't go back to look at the cover picture to see what it is. I'll just kind of see if I can guess. And it's kind of fun. Like down here, I think these are some yarn balls, which is, which is fun. Which were the symbols from her shirtwaist up there. And if my husband comes home, I will have to pause, but maybe I'll get to keep going. We'll see. <laughs> All right. There's the end of that section. The next one is down here. I wonder if I should... Uh, I think I'll start and stop again. It's a little too far to drag it, especially when I'm this low on thread. And there's a few things around that I can anchor it on, not a lot. This one, I started kind of in the middle of the section just because that's the closest to my anchor point, but I'll just kind of move around. And that's okay too. This, this part is not really about typewriter stitching, it's just stitching, but you know, you guys like that too. Almost out of thread here. That's the end of that section and that thread. And I think there's still, let's mark these off. There's still sev seven stitches left, but I wasn't gonna get seven stitches out of that. <laughs> So those occur. There's one in the in the yarn ball. Oh, there's a little chunk uh, kind of down here. So I'll do those later when they come up. Probably not for a long time because they're way down there. So now I'm going to go back up, and I think that was the little next one. That was the next highest symbol that was unstitched. And that's another blend, and I've already stitched 254 stitches today, so I think I will be done. But that's essentially what I do when I'm doing the typewriter method, is I will, especially here in the middle of a project, you can see how it, how it is being implemented. I go to the topmost part of the design that is yet unstitched and find the first symbol that is not yet done. And if there is a tie, I do left to right. And it helps me choose my symbol, and... I stitch it wherever it occurs in the pattern until my thread runs out. And again, you can modify that to fit your stitching style or your, you know, whatever, and then move back up to the top and pick your next symbol. So I hope that was helpful and hopefully not too confusing. Let me know if you have any questions. 
and hopefully I will come back with a regular update video um, on Tuesday in March. Happy stitching! Bye!